When the virgins were gathered together the second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. Now Esther had not made known her kindred or her people as Mordecai had charged her, for Esther obeyed Mordecai, just as when she was brought up by him. And in those days, as Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Bigthan and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, who guarded the threshold, became angry and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And this came to the knowledge of Mordecai, and he told it to Queen Esther, and Esther told the king in the name of Mordecai. And when the affair was investigated and found to be so, the men were both hanged on the gallows, and it was recorded in the book of the Chronicles in the presence of the king. After these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman the Agagite, the son of Hamadatha, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were at the king's gate bowed down and did obeisance to Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai did not bow down or do obeisance. Then the king's servants who were at the king's gate said to Mordecai, Why do you transgress the king's command? And when they spoke to him day after day, and he would not listen to them, they told Haman, in order to see whether Mordecai's words would avail. For he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow down or do obeisance to him, Haman was filled with fury. So he disdained to lay hands on Mordecai alone. So as they had made known to him the people of Mordecai, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews, the people of Mordecai, throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus. In the first month, which is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Pur, that is the lot, before Haman day after day, and they cast it month after month till the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar. Then Haman said to King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom. Their laws are different from those of every other people, and they do not keep the king's laws, so that it is not for the king's prophet to tolerate them. If it please the king, let it be decreed that they be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver into the hands of those who have charge of the king's business, that they may put it into the king's treasuries. So the king took his signet ring from his hand and gave it to Haman the Agagite, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews. And the king said to Haman, The money is given to you, the people also, to do with them as it seems good to you. Then the king's secretaries were summoned on the thirteenth day of the first month, and an edict, according to all that Haman commanded, was written to the king's satraps and to the governors over all the provinces and to the princes of all the peoples, to every province in its own script and every people in its own language. It was written in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed with the king's ring. Letters were sent by couriers to all the king's provinces to destroy, to slay, and to annihilate all Jews, young and old, women and children, in one day, the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, and to plunder their goods. This is a copy of the letter. The great king Artaxerxes to the rulers of the hundred and twenty-seven provinces from India to Ethiopia, and to the governors under them, writes thus, Having become ruler of many nations and master of the whole world, not elated with presumption of authority but always acting reasonably and with kindness, I have determined to settle the lives of my subjects in lasting tranquility, and in order to make my kingdom peaceable and open to travel throughout all its extent, to re-establish the peace which all men desire. When I asked my counselors how this might be accomplished, Haman, who excels among us in sound judgment and is distinguished for his unchanging goodwill and steadfast fidelity, and has attained the second place in the kingdom, pointed out to us that among all the nations in the world, there is scattered a certain hostile people, who have laws contrary to those of every nation, and continually disregard the ordinances of the kings, so that the unifying of the kingdom, which we honorably intend, cannot be brought about. We understand that this people, and it alone, stands constantly in opposition to all men, perversely following a strange manner of life and laws, and is ill-disposed to our government, doing all the harm they can, so that our kingdom may not attain stability. Therefore we have decreed that those indicated to you in the letters of Haman, who is in charge of affairs, and is our second father, shall all, with their wives and children, be utterly destroyed by the sword of their enemies, without pity or mercy, on the fourteenth day of the twelfth month, Adar, of this present year, so that those who have long been, and are now hostile, may in one day go down in violence to Hades, 
and leave our government completely secure and untroubled hereafter. A copy of the document was to be issued as a decree to every province by proclamation to all the peoples to be ready for that day. The couriers went in haste by order of the king, and the decree was issued in Susa, the capital. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Susa was perplexed. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the midst of the city, wailing with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, wherever the king's command and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting and weeping, and lamenting, and most of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's maids and her eunuchs came and told her, the queen was deeply distressed. She sent garments to clothe Mordecai, so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to attend her, and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what this was and why it was. Hathak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him, and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay in the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her and charge her to go to the king to make supplication to him and entreat him for her people. Remembering the days of your lowliness when you were cared for by me, because Haman, who is next to the king, spoke against us for our destruction, beseech the Lord and speak to the king concerning us and deliver us from death. And Hathak went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a message for Mordecai, saying, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law. All alike are to be put to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. And I have not been called to come into the king these thirty days. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Then Mordecai told them to return answer to Esther. Think not that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Then Mordecai prayed to the Lord and said, O God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, blessed are you. O Lord, Lord King, who rule over all things, for the universe is in your power, and there is no one who can oppose you, if it is your will to save Israel. For you have made heaven and earth and every wonderful thing under heaven, and you are Lord of all, and there is no one who can resist you. You know all things. You know, O Lord, that I would have been willing to kiss the soles of Haman's feet to save Israel. But I did not do this, lest I set the glory of man above the glory of God. I will not bow down to anyone but you, O Lord, my God. And now, O Lord, God and King, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, spare your people, for the eyes of our foes are upon us to annihilate us, and they desire to destroy your inheritance. Do not neglect your portion, which you redeemed for yourself out of the land of Egypt. Hear my prayer, and have mercy upon your inheritance. Turn our mourning into feasting, that we may live and sing praise to your name, O Lord. Do not destroy the mouth of those who praise you. And all Israel cried out mightily, for their death was before their eyes. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Let another praise you, and not your own mouth, a stranger, and not your own lips. A stone is heavy, and sand is weighty, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. Wrath is cruel, anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, profuse are the kisses of an enemy. He who is sated loathes honey, 
but to one who is hungry everything bitter is sweet. Like a bird that strays from its nest is a man who strays from his home. Oil and perfume make the heart glad, but the soul is torn by trouble. Your friend and your father's friend do not forsake, and do not go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him who reproaches me. A prudent man sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. Take a man's garment when he has given surety for a stranger, and hold him in pledge when he gives surety for foreigners. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it, that is, righteousness through faith. But that Israel who pursued the righteousness, which is based on law, did not succeed in fulfilling that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it through faith, but as if it were based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone that will make men stumble, a rock that will make them fall, and he who believes in him will not be put to shame. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. I bear them witness that they may have a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law, that everyone who has faith may be justified. Moses writes that the man who practices the righteousness, which is based on the law, shall live by it. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For man believes with his heart, and so is justified, and he confesses with his lips, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and bestows his riches upon all who call upon him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are men to call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without a preacher? And how can men preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news, but they have not all heeded the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation, I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, All day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Mordecai takes a stand against the pagan culture of his day. He did not bow down to do obeisance to the Persian official Haman. When the king's servants press him to comply, he refuses, for he had told them that he was a Jew. His bold act of fidelity to the Lord, by which he refuses to worship a man as if he were a god, draws Haman's ire. Haman sets his heart on genocide, the central plot of the book of Esther. While Mordecai's action may seem overly bold and risky, he sets a pattern for our own courageous profession of faith. St. Paul teaches, If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We too might be called upon to take courageous steps in our witness for Jesus Christ and the gospel. Though we might feel secure today, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Mordecai risked his life to honor the Lord. We too should be willing to joyfully suffer ridicule or exclusion for our faith. In what ways are you tempted to do obeisance to the world?